Every character from The Walking Dead has a fan following, and Carol is no exception. Watching her arc take her from domestic abuse and zombie apocalypse survivor to gun-toting badass has been an incredible journey, driven by some powerful performances from Melissa McBride. She's proven she can play everything from battered wife to trembling survivor to someone capable of doing whatever it takes. And we mean whatever. Just... Just look at the flowers. Ouch. There's no doubt McBride has become part of the heart and soul of the show, but you've seen her before too, even if she looked so different that you might not have actually realized it. Born in Kentucky, McBride headed to Atlanta in the 1980s to start what's been a wildly random career. Throughout the 1990s, she appeared in a slew of commercials that seemed to have been lost to the mists of time, but footage of her first major acting credit thankfully remains. She appeared in a 1993 episode of Matlock, playing the fidgety Darlene Kellogg in a bizarre episode called Matlock's Bad, Bad, Bad Dream. The story starts with Matlock meeting some friends in a jazz nightclub and restaurant, and he's introduced to Darlene, who's craving a cigarette but trying to quit. The rest of the episode is literally right out of Matlock's nightmares, and when his dreams transport him back to a Prohibition-themed restaurant, she shows up as a 1930s-era cigarette girl. Her long, curly hair was the height of fashion in the 1990s for sure, but it also makes her look completely different. In an epic twist, it's completely possible to imagine Season 1 Carol watching that exact show while doing Ed's ironing. McBride still sported her 90s curls in her next role, a small part in the long-running Southern cop drama in the heat of the night. Her role in the 1994 two-part episode Give Me Your Life is admittedly brief. McBride plays a reporter determined to get the story during an investigation into a shady church in Mississippi. While she's playing a pretty stereotypical plucky news reporter, there are still some hints of the McBride would later come to know and love. It only lasted a single season in 1995 before being cancelled, but the supernatural horror mystery show American Gothic had some big names attached, including executive executive producer Sam Raimi, and a cast that included eventual A-listers Evan Rachel Wood, Sarah Paulson, Lucas Black, and Gary Cole. McBride appeared in the episode Dead to the World as the sheriff's one-time girlfriend who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Appearing in a flashback scene, Holly Gallagher is an archetype familiar to McBride's fans, the eager-to-please woman who thrives in her caretaker role. She said herself that it's something she has in common with Carol, telling AMC, I've gotten myself into some difficult situations because I couldn't say no. Actually, I've gotten myself into some difficult places because I thought I could fix somebody. After appearing in a handful of made-for-TV movies with names like A Season in Purgatory, Any Place But Home, and Close to Danger, McBride landed in a two-part episode of Walker, Texas Ranger, alongside living internet meme Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris doesn't churn butter. He roundhouse kicks the cows, and the butter comes straight out. <laughs> Again in a nurturing role, McBride played Rachel Woods, a pediatric doctor tasked with caring for a young patient, played by Haley Joel Osment, who's been removed from a house during a drug bust. Walker told me I had AIDS. Yep, it's that episode. In the cult hit 1990s series Dawson's Creek, Dawson and his friends head to a bar in an attempt to distract him from his broken heart. When he spots McBride's Nina from across the bar, he knows he's found the one. Nina chats with Dawson for a bit and invites him back to her place to hang out and watch movies, which is a 90s version of Netflix and Chill. He passes, but they still share a kiss, making McBride the focus of all kinds of fangirl jealousy long before anyone ever started wanting Carol and Daryl to be a thing. When McBride was approached to audition for the 2007 adaptation of Stephen King's The Mist, she was initially reluctant, but she went along and eventually landed a gig that would lead her to her most iconic role. She not only got the role described only in the credits as woman with kids at home, but she made such an impression on producer Frank Darabont that when it came time to start casting for The Walking Dead a few years later, he gave her a call. It's absolutely not surprising, even though she's only in a single early scene and in the final moments of the movie. The ending to The Mist is one that sticks with those that see it. She doesn't say anything, and she doesn't have to. It's no wonder Darabont kept her number. Even with Carol's increasing importance on The Walking Dead, McBride has still found time to do occasional work outside the show. In 2014, the reconstruction of William Zero debuted at the Fantasia Film Festival in Montreal. Described as a suburban mad scientist tale, McBride plays one of the scientist's colleagues in a mind-bending drama that deals with some pretty heavy material. The moral of the story to 
suggests there's no shortcut around grief, and that the only way to get through it is to deal with it head on, a message Carol would certainly approve of. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.